The last retouching option we'll cover for this lecture is the clone stamp tool. It's usually a popular option for both novice and experienced Photoshop users because it is relatively easy to use. But you need to be careful. It is easy to use the clone stamp tool, but difficult to master. You'll notice when we jump over to Photoshop that changes happen really fast when using this tool. So you need to take your time and remember your goal should always be to make your retouching edits as seamless as possible. That usually means making them look as natural as possible, but it doesn't always have to. There are times when you'll want to create funky, exciting, or crazy designs, and it's okay too. Whatever your end goal is, however, it will always be important to make your edits look purposeful. One major thing to look out for when using the clone stamp tool are unwanted repeating patterns. If you don't reset your target, similarly to the way Jessica showed you how to set the target for the healing brush tool, you'll end up with the same target area showing up over and over all over your image. So you'll want to reset your target as often as possible to avoid this. Before we jump over to Photoshop, let's talk about the steps you'll follow to use the clone stamp tool and view an example or two of how it can be used in a project. The steps we must follow when using the clone stamp tool include, and this is always the most important one, you want to either duplicate or copy the background layer or make a new layer or a blank layer to apply your edits to. Then you'll select the clone stamp tool. You'll set a target location to pull pixels from by option or alt clicking the desired target area. Then you'll paint over the area you wish to remove or add to, in short, staggered brush strokes. Um, oftentimes I just simply click um, several times to blend. Then you'll reset your target location often to avoid those unwanted repeating patterns. Now let's look at a few examples. In this first slide, I've zoomed in on a snippet of this image. It includes a random sheet's head that I'd like to get rid of that's coming right out of the corner here. Using the clone stamp tool, we can set a target area to pull pixels from and then paint over the unwanted element until it's been covered up by the new pixels. Because the background of the image has a lot of texture that repeats, the edit is virtually seamless. No one will be able to tell that there used to be a sheep's head on one side of the image. So when using the clone stamp tool, you'll want to experiment with the settings. And when I demo this, um, when we go over to Photoshop, I'll show you how um, or some ways that that will work. So here, I'm going to repeat the same process I used to remove the sheep's head to remove several additional unwanted elements in the image. So I'd like to make the white sheep in the middle of the image the center of attention. And in order to do that, I need to get rid of anything that I think is distracting from the image. So I've circled those things. These um, random guys up here and these patches of dirt um, and this bench over here, we're going to cover all those things up. <clears throat> So this is the result I came up after using the clone stamp tool to remove those unwanted elements. So for each individual area that I, need, that I needed to retouch, I set a target by option or alt clicking the good area, meaning an area that doesn't contain any blemishes. So I used that to literally copy and then paste over the bad area. And I did that by clicking or using small staggered brush strokes until everything was removed in the way that I felt was good. All right, and lastly here, the clone stamp can be used for more than removing elements from an image. So in this example, you can see that I've duplicated the white sheep so that, that, so that now it has a friend. The process is the same as removing an, an element. Um, you'd select a target area to start copying and then use the small staggered brush strokes to paint a copy of that targeted area. The only difference between this example and the last is what I'm choosing as the target. So the target would be the sheep and then you would apply that um, and copy and paste onto that other area. So let's take a look in Photoshop to see how this works. So I have this same image open and I'm going to move this panel out of the way, this properties panel out of the way. And over here, again, the first thing to do would be either to duplicate the background layer. In this case, I'm just going to create a new blank layer. I'm going to then select the clone stamp tool 
And here is the clone stamp tool right here. And on these settings, since I have um, a blank layer that I'm using, I'm going to make sure that the sample is set to all layers. You can do current and below, but I'm going to just set it to all layers. So then what I'm sampling will be something from the layer below. So it won't be just nothing. Otherwise, it would be just nothing. Um, all right, and you'll notice here too that your clone stamp tool is a brush. So remember the painting demos. Um, you have the same options here with size and hardness. So to start, I'm going to set a medium hardness. I'm going to set the hardness to 50%. And that means it's not so hard and it's not so soft. It's just right in the middle. Um, and you'll see that in the edges of the brush. And then I'm going to use the shortcut bracket keys in order to control the size. So here I have a really large brush. So rather than um, picking the size of the brush here, I'm going to um, change the size of the brush depending on what I need. So what I need here, and I'll start here first with um, getting rid of this random sheep's head coming out of the side of the picture. So here, I'm going to make sure that the brush is big enough to cover that up. And you can see here that I'm moving, I'm using the bracket keys to make it a little bit bigger to cover that up. And I'm covering up more than just the sheep's head. I'm also um, getting that shadow that's there right next to it. I'm going to go up here with my brush. I'm going to target this area by hitting the Option or Alt key and clicking. And then there's my selection of the good pixels. Then I'm going to move that over what I want to cover up, those bad pixels, and I'm going to go ahead and click there. And you can click, you can paint using short staggered brush strokes to help you blend that adjustment. So you see here that the target area, and if I pull my brush up here, you can see that the edges are fading out. So I've got that nice, just what I think is, is a good um, hardness and or softness to this brush for doing these edits. So depending on your image, you're going to want to experiment with that hardness because that's going to help the help everything blend together. So the next thing, and you notice here, it's sampling adjacent to and around the area that I originally targeted. So I'm going to need to set a new target. And now I'm going to target and try to remove um, these animals up on top here. So I want to set a new target. And I'm going to set select an area that is similar. And so I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key and click. And then I'm going to click and do some short staggered brush strokes and take care of that area. And that is blending quite nicely, I think. And then I'm going to do the same here. But now, rather than just keep going, um, and you'll see I'd actually pick up things that I don't want, I'm going to, going to reselect my target in order to continue with the editing. Oops, and that was not a good one. I'm going to undo that. So, so the idea here is to remember to continue to reselect your, um, your target um, so you can really do a good job with the editing. So down here, I'm also going to um, try to get rid of these distractions. I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger and go through here and get rid of these dust or these dirt patches. And again, I'm going to set my target often so I can do a good job at that and get rid getting rid of all these distracting elements. Now, there are a couple things that you can do um, for blending. Now, one of the things I mentioned is changing the hardness of the brush, and that will help blend those selected or those copied areas into the new areas that you're laying down those new pixels. You can also um, choose another option up here in the Edit menu. So in the Edit menu, you, have, you can either step backward, undo Clone Stamp, or you can actually select Fade the Clone Stamp. So this will actually target the last Clone Stamp that you did and if I do that, I'll select Fade, Clone Stamp, 
I'll go here, and if I fade that, you can see that I made the adjustment over here, and I can fade that to blend it a little bit more if maybe the edges are too harsh or maybe it just looks awkward. So that's another option that you can do in order to um, help blend. You can actually use the Edit Fade option. Um, that will target just one of the retouching that you did um, rather than going into the whole layer and changing the opacity, which is a similar thing that you're doing, but it, again, you're just targeting one of those retouching edits that you did. So let's see if I can manage to do this last, this last thing here, and that would be this picnic table. So let's see. And there we go. That does all the job that I wanted to do in terms of removing all the unwanted and distracting areas of this photograph. So now for the last thing, I want to show you how to um, repeat or duplicate areas. So with the same settings, um, uh, you can, or the same technique, you can duplicate. And in this case, I'd, I want to duplicate this sheep here um, and repeat it in another area. So I'm going to actually, I'm going to reduce the size here a little bit and I'm going to change the hardness of the brush. I'm going to increase the hardness so I have a more, a sharper edge around my brush. Um, and in this case, I'm going to want to blend it a little more like that. And I, I'm, I'm not going to want so much fading to happen um, around the animal. So I want a, a sharper edge to this. So that's why I chose a different sharpness. So here I'm going to go ahead and target the sheet and click to select it. And then click to drop it um, and where I feel he needs a friend. And again, you can do this So you have more than just one friend um, for the sheep here, but that's how you would duplicate the areas. And you see with the hard, uh, more of a hardness, you don't have any fading into the sheep. Um, with more softness to the brush, you could risk doing that. So that's, you know, some of the things that you can control um, with the hardness of the brush. And um, it will help you with all your retouching skills. So that is the last thing I wanted to show you, and that will end um, this demo of retouching.